Hey, my good friend, Sam Haymart with Test Driven TV, the all new 2024 Dodge Charger family, the multi energy Dodge Charger family has been revealed. Now, while most of the media has already told you all about it, you probably already know all the particulars. In this video, we're going to be taking our first look here at Test Driven TV, but most important, I'm going to tell you what I really think about it. First, I am thrilled that the new Charger Coupe and sedan look nearly identical to the concept car we saw just last year. It wasn't like the electric Ram Rev pickups where the concept was an amazing design shot to the moon and the production model was a ho-hum looking regrill of the current and aging Ram gas powered pickup. So there's that. Instead, the all new 2024 Dodge Charger family starts with a dedicated new platform architecture called STLA Large that can allow the car to be either full battery electric or accommodate traditional gasoline powertrains. That's rare, and if they did it well, they'll get accolades for their extra work and forethought. While electric vehicles will be the default norm by the end of the next decade, not everyone's on board the good ship Lollipop yet, so being able to sell gas-powered models for a while is smart business until those who aren't all charged up yet get with the program. As such, EV models will be the first to go on sale later this year, with gas-powered models coming online later in 2025. We'll get to those in a couple of minutes. The good news for performance-minded gearheads is that the all-new electric Dodge Chargers will be fast AF, meeting or exceeding the performance benchmark set by last year's Hellcat-powered monsters. We're told the top performance model 2024 Dodge Charger Daytona with all-wheel drive and 670 horsepower will rip from 0 to 60 in 3.3 seconds. The Charger Daytona Scat Pack will knock the quarter mile out in 11.5 seconds. They point out that nothing else in the current muscle car era beats that, and they're right. A lesser powered standard all-wheel drive electric powertrain has 496 horsepower, and that'll be found in the RT. For those that are going to miss the loud roar and whine of the Hellcat V8, they've devised a sound system called Frasonic Chambered Exhaust, which will emit an artificial exhaust sound that's said to be exhilarating and loud. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, I am not yet sold on this concept. And I'll just have to get back with you on this when I drive one. It just seems kind of hokey on its face, but we'll see. For those pining for gasoline power chargers, the V8 is gone for good. But the all new twin turbocharged Hurricane 3 liter inline sixes will be on hand in both 420 and 550 horsepower power levels, depending on the model you choose. While I love the growing list of new high performance electric cars I've driven, I am also looking forward to see what these are like. To be offered in both a two-door coupe and a four-door sedan, the styling really speaks for itself, so I'll pass on describing every little element. You have eyes, you can make your own judgments. One of the things that you can't help but to notice are its large 20-inch wheels. Now, they're necessary to house the massive 16-inch brakes. Why so big, you ask? Well, because the electric charger is really, really, really heavy some 5,838 pounds. Yeah, you put a few buddies in it and you're well on your way to its gross vehicle weight rating of 6,700 pounds. To make it all work, it has a 400 volt electric architecture utilizing an electronic drive model called an EDM front and rear. And it has a huge 100.5 kilowatt hour battery pack under the floor about the size of a queen size mattress. Both EDMs are self-contained, integrating their own power inverter, gearbox, and motor, each with 335 horsepower and 300 pound-feet of torque, regardless of the model you buy. The various output ratings on the different models is actually based on programming, not so much hardware. To make this new world all fun and games for the gearhead crowd, it has a boatload of drive modes and features like a push-button power shot mode that can add 40 horsepower temporarily, drag, track, drift, and donut modes, line lock, launch control, and more. The list is endless almost. They're really trying hard to make you feel good about all this. Really though, it's almost too much. Again, I'll get back to you on this after I drive one. 
With a multi-link front and rear suspension very heavy duty and an available semi-active adaptive suspension, it promises to handle and with the large tires, wheels and brakes, it should handle as good as a 6,000 pound car can. I have to point out that Dodge gave us this beautiful rolling track footage here, but they really aren't pushing it too hard. I honestly can't imagine what nearly 700 horsepower all out in a 6,000 pound car will look and feel like yet. I'm guessing you better stock up on some extra extra tires and brake pads for those track days. You're going to need them. It will be a nice car though inside and out. It certainly looks the part. It has the curb appeal. The unique front R-Wing first seen on the concept lives on to production, at least on electric powered models. We don't know about the gas ones yet. Inside is a semi-retro interior in its design, but one packed with the technology we're told we want. LED lighting is everywhere, big screens everywhere, and lots of whiz-bang gizmetry to keep us off our phones behind the wheel, or at least we can have them connected up wirelessly and enjoying all of its feature content. Notably, its flat top and bottom steering wheel has paddle shifters to control the regenerative braking, and it has the power shot button when equipped. It has the pistol grip shifter too, which I'm glad for. It needs a bone throw to the crowd. Unlike the last generation charger, it has a hatch out back allowing you to get all versed with the rear seats that fold flat. It has a 38.5 cubic foot cargo area to boot, and there's even a frunk on electric models with an additional 1.5 cubic feet. Perfect for your portable charging cable. In that way, it has up to a 317 mile range for the 496 horsepower Charger RT, and the high powered 670 horsepower Daytona Scat Pack has a 260 mile range. If you can find the 350 kilowatt hour level 3 charger, you can get from 20 to 80 percent charge in about 30 minutes. Level 2 charging, like most public charging and home chargers, will take 6 to 10 hours depending on the amp rating of the charger, essentially overnight, which is fine for most people. The two-door coupe version of the electric 2024 Dodge Chargers will begin production this summer. The electric four-door chargers will start production at the beginning of 2025. Gas power chargers? They also start production in early 2025. All of them will be built at the Stellantis Windsor, Ontario, Canada assembly plant. Well, there you have it, my friends, the 2024 Dodge Charger family, coupe and four-door sedan. One thing I didn't mention in the spiel is the fact that both of these cars actually share the same wheelbase and the same overall silhouette. They made two and four doors happen in the same envelope, which is almost as brilliant as creating a platform that can have both full battery electric and internal combustion powered powertrains in the same vehicle. That is brilliant and look we're going to have full electric vehicles by the end of the next decade for the most part that's going to be the default but not everybody's on board with that yet there's still a lot of people out there that aren't having it and so for the next decade or so until we get to that point they can sell gasoline powered chargers to those people that don't want anything to do with this electric stuff yet and so that's brilliant. There's a lot of other car companies out there, I'm betting you, are wishing they would have come up with something like this. Now, the caveat is that it could be a compromise on both ends of the spectrum. You know, if you have all things to all people, sometimes it's not that great. So if it turns out that this is a good electric and a good gas-powered car in terms of the handling, performance, and livability, everyone's going to think they're brilliant. If it turns out that it's just kind of a ho-hum wow, that just doesn't work too well, then everyone's going to say they were really idiots, right? So uh, we're not going to know until we get to drive these things. And until that time, you can see our latest video right there. And better yet, I want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel right there, and that way you'll stay informed of when our test drives come. Either way, stay tuned.